Hey, what's going on guys? Jay's Two Cents here, and many of you might be finding now with this holiday season, you're getting ready to build your very first computer. And first, let me go ahead and welcome you to the awesome world of PCs, where it is completely endless on what you can do. And what's also endless is the list of parts that uh, are available to you, and you might be finding yourself completely overwhelmed on what to buy when it comes to your computer. So for the next several weeks, or maybe even the next couple of months, because some of you may be getting money, you know, from Christmas being mailed into you, grandmas, grandpas, maybe your great second cousins, cousins, uncles, roommate, I don't know, something like that. And you guys are gonna be building some computers here. So I'm gonna be putting together some different bracketing of price points and showing you how I would spend your hard earned money. And I have no problem spending your money, I'm serious. In fact, send it to me, I'll spend it, watch. Watch how fast that money goes. Silence gets redefined, November 2014. Now I don't like to give these builds names because let's just be honest, I'm not very creative when it comes to name. Like, the, like this one would have been like the 750 build. But anyway, guys, when it comes to spending money with PC parts, it is very overwhelming. There are just so many freaking endless combinations. And there are sometimes hundreds of choices when it comes to each individual component, leaving you guys very, very confused, let alone knowing what's compatible with each other. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the work for you in this video. Now today we're gonna look at how I would spend $750. I, I think that tends to be pretty much kind of the sweet spot where a lot of people are, are willing to spend money and how much money they have to spend when it comes to their first build. And I know that because I kind of keep an eye on the budgets people are asking me, you know, hey Jay, I have this much money, how would you spend it? 750 seems to be, pretty much like the main price point. Now, there are, we're gonna be doing other builds that are cheaper, we're gonna be doing builds that are more expensive, and then we're gonna be doing builds that are just outrageous at some points, just for just for the heck of it. Like, how would I spend $15,000 kind of thing? So, yeah, just for the hell of it, for the sake of some fun content. Now, at this price point for the processor, I decided to go with the AMD Athlon X4 860K. Now it's a pretty powerful quad core CPU. It's very light on the requirements when it comes to power and heat. So you guys can get away with actually overclocking this bad boy up to about 4.5 gigahertz in most cases without too many issues and without building too much heat. It is a quad core and as games are starting to become more multi-threaded, quad core CPUs are definitely uh, becoming much more utilized when it comes to gaming, so that would be my recommendation there. And since it comes in right around 90 bucks, it really has an amazing value. If you're a veteran PC builder or even a newbie and you go to any forum and you ask what's the best bang for the buck CPU cooler, you will hear over and over and over again that the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo is absolutely unmatched at its price point. The thing comes in at about 30 bucks. Sometimes you can get $5 off coupons or whatever, make it at about 25 bucks, and it has four direct copper uh, contact heat pipes, amazing cooler. It actually looks pretty decent and you will not get a better uh, cooling and overclocking experience out of an air cooler at this price point, period. I mean, there are coolers that are more expensive that perform better, but usually they are like five times more expensive, like the Noctua. We're not even gonna consider that in this price point. Hyper 212 Evo all the way, no other cooler at this price point is even really recommended as far as I'm concerned. Now the motherboard is a little tricky at this price point because really the A88X chipset is the only chipset that really makes sense with this CPU. Now there's MSI, Gigabyte, ASUS, a a a ASRock. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of different boards that are also with the A88X A88X chipset at this at this price point. So we're gonna go ahead and today go with the Gigabyte F2A88X UP4. Now it's also uh, one of their gaming branded uh, motherboards. It's got a nice red black theme going on, nice heat sinks on there. It's got plen plenty of SATA ports, plenty of connectivity, fan control, motherboard headers for the fans. Really, really nice motherboard with decent overclocking as well. Plus it comes in at under a hundred bucks, which is definitely a plus. So that's my recommendation when it comes to the motherboard. Now for the gaming RAM, I chose eight gigabytes of G-Skills Sniper Series. It's a uh, very nice looking RAM. It's got a nice heat sink on there, a nice red black theme going on. It's 2133 megahertz, two four gigabyte sticks, which is gonna be plenty for games, uh, especially if you're playing at the 1080p uh, resolution, which at this price point you pretty much would be 1080p or less, but it's very fast RAM. It's very inexpensive and G-Skill has really become one of those trusted brands when it comes to gaming RAM. They really give you the features and the speeds and the timings that you want. 
And for the most part, you're not gonna to be too concerned with that. So just know that this particular set of RAM, you put it in your computer, it's gonna perform extremely well, it even overclocks a bit if you want to, and uh, it's highly recommended amongst gamers and enthusiast builders like myself. So the G-Skill Sniper Series is definitely where I would put my money at this price point. Now for the storage, I chose two terabytes of Seagate Barracuda 7200 RPM 64 megabyte cache uh, hard drive. There's no SSD in this build that would put us over our uh, intended price point of $750, but this particular hard drive is uh, fairly quick with a decent amount of cache that's not going to really be too slow. I mean, it's going to be quite a bit noticeably slower than SSDs when it comes to boot time and, and some games to load like Battlefield 4. Um, Really, Battlefield 4 has some pretty terrible load times, so that's the best example I've got right now, but you can always add an SSD later. It's not hard, and SSDs are really coming down in price, so if you are able to save more money to put towards the build, I would put it into an, an SSD maybe for a boot drive and a couple of your favorite games, but other than that, really, there's no point in putting an SSD in a build at this price point. It just takes away from performance in other places like the CPU, RAM, or GPU, and that's not a very fair trade-off, in my opinion, when it comes to 750 bucks. So this is a, a two terabyte drive that's pretty quick, gives you plenty of storage, and it's going to be really easy to set up. And with one single drive, things are pretty simple. So two terabyte Seagate Barracuda is definitely my recommendation. Now for the power supply, I chose a 550 watt Seagate. And the reason why I chose Seagate is many of you may not be aware, but Seagate is the OEM manufacturer for a lot of the high-end uh, power supplies that are on the market. In fact, Seagate is actually the rebrand for Cooler Master's V-Series. Uh, it's got modular cables on there. It's uh, very efficient, it's low noise. I highly, highly recommend Seagate. That is my go-to brand when it comes to power supplies and any company rebranding them. When it comes to Seagate, you just really can't go wrong with the quality, durability, and warranties. So Seagate 550 watt is also more than enough power supply if you want to throw in another one of the graphics cards which we have in this build, uh, or even go with a single higher end card, a single 550 watt power supply could go easily all the way up to like a Titan Z, or not Titan Z, but a Titan Black Edition. Uh, really, it's a great, fantastic power supply, and uh, it's not going to be wrecking your power bill while you're at it. So Seagate all the way. Now for 1080p or lesser resolution gaming, you really can't go wrong with the 270X from AMD. The R9 270X is powerful, two gigabytes of VRAM, GDDR5, uh, there's a lot of different variations of the 270X. So for this build, I chose to go with the PowerColor Devil version. It's a custom PCB, three fans, it's super quiet, super efficient, and it's just gonna wreck games at 1080p at uh, high and even ultra resolutions, depending on the games you wanna play. Now the two gigabytes of VRAM will start to be a little bit of a limiting factor here in the future as games and their textures evolve, but you're gonna be, still be set for many years to come at uh, the two gigabytes of VRAM. The 270X is a fantastic deal. It's coming in at about $150. And when they first came out, they were 250 bucks. AMD's pretty much slashed all their cards by $100 across the board. And it's just making AMD, especially the 270X, a very enticing option when it comes to budget gaming. Cannot go wrong with it. I cannot, I cannot at this price point recommend anything from NVIDIA. The 270X is just absolutely where I would spend the money hands down every single time. So you can't go wrong with this particular card. Now for the case, I chose the Corsair Graphite Series 230T. Now it's not the most fantastic looking case, but it's got a side window, it's got dual fan intake, it's got plenty of exhaust on there, and plenty of room for graphics cards up to 14 and a half inches long. So the case can be reused as you upgrade your build all the way up to massive length dual GPU cards. You're not gonna have any issues with plenty of airflow, and it comes in at 50 bucks after a rebate. So you really cannot go wrong with that case whatsoever. Now cases are one of those things that are also aesthetically uh, subjective. You may not like the look of this case. So if that's you, just take the money that's allocated in this build towards that case and apply it towards a case that's at the same price point that you like. Now, there's so many different cases on the market. There's no way I could choose the right case for you. So just take the amount uh, that this case costs and find a case that's a equivalent that you like. But in my recommendation, I like the 230T when it comes to space, airflow, and price. It really is a fantastic case when you take those things into consideration. 
Now last but not least, I tossed a $20 light on DVD rewrite drive in there that you can use to install your OS or do some media backup, whatever you guys want. It's only 20 bucks. You can yank it out if you don't think you need an optical drive. I haven't used an optical drive in years. None of my computers have an optical drive in there. Not even the kid's computer has an optical drive. So they're pretty much becoming way of the past, but some people still want it. I put it in there, 20 bucks, take it or leave it however you want. Now you may have noticed that this PC build, if you look at the PC part picker link down in the description, it's coming in at about $750 before rebates and discounts. I don't like to take rebates and special discounts into consideration on these builds because those are always changing. I like to take the worst case scenario, the most amount of money it would cost you, and then if you find any discounts or cheaper prices along the way, hey, you benefit from it, and I didn't lie to you by saying, hey, you could build a $500 computer, but really you have to put up 700 bucks and then mail in a bunch of receipts that nobody really ever does anyway. So guys, it's been Jay's Two Cents. How I would spend $750 this holiday season. Play around with that build and let me know what you guys are gonna do. Are you guys building a PC around this price point? Have you built a PC around this price point? If you have, let us know what you're running down in the comments. You guys can help each other out there by giving people ideas on how they would help spend this money. This is just one way of an endless amount of combinations that you could use to spend this cash. So guys, if you build this computer, make sure you hit me up on Twitter, show me pics of your computer or uh, computers that are in the similar price point. I'd love to see your PCs. And as always guys, I hope to see you in the next one.